Hey everyone. You hear me preach a lot about changing financial processes and this week I wanted to talk about why you don't have to change your process. Uh, yes, conflict, yes, cognitive dissonance. Um, what, I, what I want to do is get you out of that binary worldview that you're currently holding on to around right and wrong answers and into a non-binary uh, worldview around there are simply choices that we get, decisions we make, and they open up a new set of choices or a subsequent set of potentially different choices. So I wanted to share a story of a client who didn't change their financial process because sometimes this might be the way to get unstuck and to get the momentum that you need in your change program. So this particular client was, we were working with uh, the IT department and they had a financial controller who, from the moment I met her, she just got it. We had conversations about what we were trying to do in terms of changing the way that projects were delivered, changing the way that we um, that we operated and maintained systems. Uh, this person was naturally, she was the shiny objects person. <laughs> and you don't come across them very often in finance teams. But this woman got it. For whatever reason, she was completely on board. And we had her as a big part of the workshops that we were doing with the executives and the general managers around how do we start to pick and choose the interventions that we're going to take within this IT department and across the organization, starting to branch outside of IT. Um, so the, this company was very much in that space of we've done a bunch of the hygiene stuff in the IT department and we can now start to deliver a little quicker. People are realizing that there's a little bit of garbage in, garbage out. Um, it's not all IT's fault. It still take a reasonable amount of time. There's still some work to do, but we're moving into that sort of second phase of transformation around um, the rest of the business realizing that, hey, we can keep feeding this garbage at IT and they will start to churn that out quicker and quicker, but actually let's look at what's going on outside of that particular department. And so this woman was involved in the workshops. Uh, we had the CIO in the room, his general managers, um, his executive suite, and this financial controller as part of that team. And I remember there was this moment where we were talking about business cases and projects and starting to try and encourage experimentation and learning through the process of what we were working on, rather than this constant culture of needing to know all the answers up front and then getting stuck into this over-analysis and this, this fear around needing to have all the answers and be perfectionistic before we moved forward. How do we start to encourage these, these new ways of working and conscious that it's not an open checkbook. Like there's gotta be some guidelines around how we do this. Uh, you know, we still need to solve problems in a methodical and responsible manner. But what does that look like for this team? Because it's different for every team. And I remember this moment where this woman turned around and we talked about this idea of prototyping. Um, so she's not particularly IT heavy, um, but we talked about prototyping. We talked about this idea of let's come up with the idea and the opportunity. Let's do the smallest thing possible to understand whether, we, whether that idea that we've had will have the impact that we expect. So we were talking through how do we give people, you know, a team of say four or five, a half a day to experiment with their idea, at which point um, they, that we then want to move that into a more fully formed project type of piece of work. And I remember this point where she turned around and she said, we don't need to change our financial practices to do this. And sort of everyone went silent because we'd had this big blocker around how are we going to get the Board of Finance community on board? We know we've got you, you, you get what we're trying to do. How are we going to get the board of finance team on board? You know, how do we enable these ways of working? And she said, no, no, we've got this. Today we have a process that says, I, you come to me and ask for $50,000, quarter of a million dollars to do a investigation, a design, a requirements gathering process. And then after a period of time, you come back and present that work back. And based on the requirements and that, sketch outline design that you've done, you then ask me for more money to commit to hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars worth of spend on building this particular thing. 
said, you don't need to change the process. All I need to do is change the question that I ask at each of those stages. So instead of you coming to me and saying, can I have $50,000 to go and write a requirements document? She said, I'm going to ask you to come to me and I will give you $50,000 to go and experiment with your idea, learn with customers on the front line in the real world, and then come back and demonstrate to me that your idea has had the impact that you expect, that it's valuable, it's what customers want, and that this is the direction that we want to head in. And then I'll give you the hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars towards that next um, that next piece of work. And all of a sudden, the whole dynamic shifted. Because all of a sudden, we weren't trying to change the financial process. The financial process was simply that there were a number of gates around trying to solve the problem of moving from uncertainty to a little more certainty of outcome, certainty of impact, certainty that we were going to be able to deliver what we intended and that it was going to get a good result for the business and our customers. That was the underlying problem. And all this person figured out to do was to change the questions that she was asking at each of those stages. And all of a sudden, it was enough to unlock ways of working because we could start to have a conversation about how do you know? How do you know that this is the right thing to do? How do you know with data, or with experience with customers, what demonstrable change? And to give you a brief example, one of the outcomes that this company was looking for was um, somebody had had this big idea about, we want to go and do a pop-up retail shop at schools as they're starting back. And this pop-up shop will have everything that you need for back to school. Great idea. What are you going to do to test that? What's the smallest thing that you can do? And so the team worked for a period of time and they said, well, initially they came up with this idea to do it for one school or to do it for maybe three schools. So we'll do three and we'll take all the stuff. So we'll have shoes, we'll have um, books, we'll have pens and pencils, we'll have you know, everything, uniforms, everything that you need to get your child back to school. And we're going to test it in one area. We'll just do one shop or maybe we'll do two so that you've got sort of two different school districts. I said, okay, it's still a lot of investment. You've got a pop-up shop, you've got stock, you've got you know, time to set up. Like That's still a, it's a hefty investment of work. We're talking about what's the smallest thing that you can do with a team of four or five that will demonstrate that your idea has some validity. Peeled it back, we peeled it back. And over the period of about a couple of hours, the team got back to, we are going to deploy two people with clipboards to a variety of schools after school, it's about three o'clock, um, on a couple of different days of the week, and this team is going to approach parents that are picking their kids up from school and say, hey, we are going to be coming back in the new year with a pop-up shop where you can buy everything that you need for back to school, and we're here today to collect some email addresses, some contact details from all of you. Um, if you are interested in us letting you know when we're going to be here, when the pop-up shop is coming, if you'd like to be on the list, give us your name and phone number, give us your email address, we'll contact you and we'll let you know. And so all of a sudden they'd shifted to a very small investment. A couple of people, a few different schools, maybe for a half an hour to an hour after school on a few days of the week, very easily we could have a team of four or five people investing roughly half a day in understanding, is there any demand for a pop-up shop where I can get everything I need to send my kids back to school? And all we'd done was ask for an email address. So we'd managed to pair it right back. That's the type of thing that this finance team were looking for. Go out, spend a small amount of effort to test your idea, get some kind of indication that it's going to have the impact that you expect. Yes, people are prepared to give me an email address so that I can contact them when the pop-up shop is organized. And then if we get flooded with email addresses, great, let's throw some money at it. If we don't, no harm, no foul, we spend about a half a day with five people. It's not that big of an investment as compared to going through the process of writing requirements documents, doing initial prototype design, coming up with a business case and locking ourselves into quite a big spend for even those two or three pop-up shops. So that's the key message for today. You do not need to change your financial processes in every situation. Sometimes you're able to unlock different ways of working within the existing structure that mean that you can come back and deal with that process at a later date. So 
keep an eye out for those ones. Um, sometimes you can ninja your way through without taking on this big, scary task of actually we're going to change the whole way that this company does business cases. So, I hope that was useful. I will be back again next week with uh, something else to talk about in terms of what we need to change in our financial practices. But I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day, and I will see you again really soon.